Hello everyone and welcome to my review for Chainsaw Man chapters 94 and 95. I'm sure some of you noticed that I did not have a review for chapter 94 out last week, and that is for a combination of reasons. Uh, the first one was my internet problems, you know about those if you watched my last Jujutsu Kaisen chapter review. Um, so I wasn't able to record and upload a video when I wanted to, and in addition to that, the chapter itself did not have a lot to talk about, it was mostly action, so by the time I had my internet back up and running, I just really did not have the motivation to make another video about something I didn't really have much to talk about. So, fortunately, uh, we're here now, and I'm doing a double chapter review, but this won't be too much longer than my normal reviews, because both of these chapters are primarily action-focused which means there's not a lot of dialogue or story stuff going on, which works for me. So, starting with chapter 94, we're pretty much seeing what the difference in power is between Denji and the Chainsaw Man, because now he's up against the hybrids and the rest of the Devil Hunter slash zombies. Um... And he is not doing anywhere near as well against them as the Chainsaw Man did. He is getting kind of dogpiled and actually has to put in somewhat significant amounts of effort to fight them. However, he does still manage to beat all of them. Uh, we see a lot more um, extreme use of the chains from his chainsaws. We started to see him use that a bit when he fought against Reze. But now it seems like he's really gotten the hang of using them. Um, so... He manages to defeat all of the hybrids, um, but in turn is sort of rendered unconscious in the process. But this is a really big step up from how strong Denji has been in the past, because each individual hybrid has been able to give him a run for his money or has just been completely out of his league. Um, he's able to beat Shadman and the Sword Devil with relatively little difficulty. Like, no difficulty, actually. I'm pretty sure those guys, he beats them the easiest out of all of them. Um, he beats Reze, who he doesn't seem to react to. Um, I don't know if he had already acknowledged that Reze was back when Pachita was in control as the Chainsaw Man, or if, you know, in the heat of battle, he's not really processing who these individual people are. Um, but considering Denji liked Reze as much as Makima, or almost as much as Makima, and was willing to run away with her. Um, it still seems kind of odd that he doesn't react to seeing that she's not dead. So I assume we'll maybe get into that at some point, maybe when things calm down a little. We'll see. Um, beats her, beats the Whip Devil, beats the Flamethrower Devil, and even beats Quan Chi. He decapitates Quan Chi, which is nuts, because during the International Assassin's Art, Quan Chi was on a completely different level from Denji. She, he, he wouldn't have been able to touch Quan Chi. Um, but he manages to decapitate her. Now, uh, this battle against the hybrids and the other members of Makima's simp squad, um, they do manage to incapacitate him. He is knocked on his back, unconscious, and Makima has to feed him her blood in order for him to heal and get back up to fight. So, he's he's much stronger than he used to be, but nowhere near as strong as the Chainsaw Man. Now, Makima wanting to kill Denji personally. Um, we have seen what Makima's personal investment in this whole thing is recently, uh, or in recent chapters. It's really just her whole obsession with the Chainsaw Man, and she's basically like a fangirl. Um, so, that sort of humanizes her a bit, I guess. She doesn't seem as cold and heartless as she, she used to, um, which in a way, I guess, makes her a little less scary than she used to be. But, regardless, into chapter 95, the first, like, three quarters of it is just the two of them going blow for blow at each other, and... Um, this is the most in-depth look we've seen at how Makima's contract works, because what we've always seen happen, most of the time, is Makima gets killed by something, and then in a different panel we see that she's fine. We never really see the whole reviving process, or regeneration process, and she doesn't really die. Um, 
But in here, we finally do. And we also see the damage being transferred to the Devil Hunters she has under her control. I know with the way her contract has worked is it was seemingly just like a random person it would get transferred to, but with the way she chains herself to these guys, it seems like she can actively choose people to redirect her damage to, which is interesting. Um, so the two of them are slicing each other up, and um, it turns out that Makima is actually quite capable when it comes to hand-to-hand -hand combat. Basically, the only times we've seen her fight, she's been just either, like, pointing her finger at someone and they explode, or she's rubbing her hands together and they get crushed. Makima has pretty much always been, like, a ranged, I don't know what do you want to call her, like a caster fighter. Um, but, surprise, surprise, she can actually beat the shit out of someone if she wants to. I'm sure some of you sick fucks are gonna like that. Um, and although she is getting sliced up in the process, she just keeps regenerating from it. Like, she keeps kicking and punching him even though, like, her, her head gets cut off and her arms get chopped off. The way her regeneration is portrayed, it's like the blood latches onto it and pulls it back to the body. Um, Whatever gets cut off, it gets pulled back and reattaches. It's kind of like the uh, the vampire guy from the end of the first Blade movie, if you remember that. Um, which is, like, kind of goofy. It's kind of silly. But, I mean, I don't have an issue with it. I That's how I imagine a lot of different types of regeneration working. There are various different ways you can sort of portray that with, like, the Wolverine regeneration where the bones come back and the flesh grows around it. You could have, like, Alucard regeneration, where it's just, like, this shadow darkness shit that just shows up and regenerates everything. Like, sometimes it'll regenerate the clothes or whatever, um, depending. Like, if it's magic regeneration or biological regeneration. And then you have shit like this, where the body just literally, like, stuff will come out to pull the severed body part back and reattach. It's kind of like Dirge from the original Clone Wars cartoon. Um, but... Yeah, Mahima kind of kicks Denji's ass. They're, they're going pretty blow for blow for a while, but eventually um, Makima blows a hole in his chest and tears out his heart, which is a little tiny, bulbous, slimy-looking Pachita, um, which is very cute, actually. And Makima goes back on her spiel about how Denji is very unbecoming of what the Chainsaw Man is supposed to be. She really is a, a fangirl. I don't know if you guys know this, but... The word fan, and the way we use it, originates from the word fanatic, which is um, not a very complimentary word, like, to be called a fanatic. Um, and I think we could certainly say, based on what we've seen, Makima is a fanatic when it comes to her, I don't know what you want to call it, worship of the Chainsaw Man. And we're still not really sure why she worships the Chainsaw Man like this. I'm assuming we'll find out at some point. But, yeah... Makima seems to, like, want to have some kind of relationship with the Chainsaw Man, as all crazy fangirls do. If you're going to get in between us, then die. That's some pretty, like, rock star fangirl shit. <laughs> that's that's some big Yandere vibes. Um, so, she, she fucking tears Pachita out of his chest, this little baby puppy Pachita. She tears him out. And... We'll have to see what happens next chapter. That's how it ends. Now, Denji did acknowledge in chapter 93, it must have been, that Makima is not someone he can beat just by slashing her up with his chainsaws. He just can't do it. Like, it's not possible. The way her contract works makes it impossible to just kill Makima in physical combat. Which is exactly what he's trying to do here. Which means there is definitely more to his plan of attack than just straight up fighting Makima. Um, and I have a feeling that's probably going to have something to do with Kishibe and Kobeni. One or both of them is probably going to go and try assassinate the Prime Minister so that then Makima's contract with him will be nullified. I'm assuming that's just how you could nullify a contract. I mean, Aki's contract with the future devil ended when he died, right? Why would, the, why would the future devil still have a contract with him if he was dead? So if the Prime Minister dies, Makima probably wouldn't have a contract with him anymore. That makes sense. So then you'd be able to hurt Makima, like, permanently. 
And when that happens, this whole fighting with reckless abandon, getting your head and arms chopped off every other second, that's not going to work. So then Makima will probably have to change tactics. And in addition, Denji will actually be able to harm her. So um, I have a feeling we're going to have the intervention of Kishibe and Kobeni in the background, on the sidelines. That will be essential to Denji's victory. Who knows, maybe they'll get Yoshida. Uh, you know, if Yoshida has finished his, his exams. Because, you know, he's a young guy, he's a student, he, he needs to be focused on his schoolwork, make sure that he can get a good paying job in the future, not have to spend the rest of his life devil hunting like Kobeni, or working at Family Burger. Um, maybe, if he's not busy, they'll get Yoshida back out uh, and in business. Uh, so, hopefully that will happen. I don't know. I'd like to see Yoshida again. He's a pretty cool guy. Um, but whatever's going on with them, I assume that will be essential to how this fight is concluded. And whatever happens after that, I mean, I guess that'll be the end of the series. Uh, I don't know if the, like, searching for the Blood Devil thing will be shown, like, his journey, or if it'll just be, like, the epilogue thing, him finding the Blood Devil. Um, we'll have to see... And I'm still curious about what's going to happen with Reze, because I'm assuming if Makima dies, then her control over her and Quan Chi and the others will disappear. Uh, that makes sense to me, at least. Though, who knows, maybe Fujimoto has come up with some other terrible thing that will happen if Makima dies, or whatever happens to the people she's controlling. Um, but I'm very excited to find out, and with that... That's really all I have to say for this week's review. If you enjoyed, please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and click that notification bell so you don't miss any of my uploads. I do Chainsaw Man chapter reviews every week. If you enjoy other series such as Record of Ragnarok, Jujutsu Kaisen, and Kengen Omega, I do videos on those series as well. So if you're interested in those, you should definitely check out my channel. If you enjoy discussing Chainsaw Man with other people, or you just enjoy the content I produce on this channel, I highly suggest you check out my Discord server. I have a link to it on my channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you around.